Hello and welcome back to Copic in the Craft Room. This is, we're going to be coloring up an image today by Michelle Perquette and you can find her in a couple places. One is her Etsy shop and you, this digital image is housed there so you can find this one there. It is her Holiday Llama. It was designed as a Christmas image um, but I'm going to change it up a little bit today. The flowers I think are meant to be more like a poinsettia. They have the holly leaves. But I'm just going to do it in some pinks and grays, or pinks and greens, sorry, so that you can do it for any type of occasion. We're going to do a real curly kind of fur on the llama because the way the outline is done, I feel like that's probably the texture we're going to go for. So I'm going to use a series of E4s on that. Luckily, this didn't take a super long time, so I'm going to do some speeding up, but it won't be super extreme. We're going to start with an E41 and we're actually going to fill in just that little nose area. Now I think on the snout it's probably smoother. What I think it probably grows smoother. And so um, we're going to start with that there and then we're going to add a little E43 kind of flicking in from the edges and adding some shape. And then I'm going to base the rest of the llama in that E43. Now sometimes when I base an area I do kind of that real heavy coat in that it is kind of a real thick, even coloring. This is not the case. I'm doing these little small circles, but I'm pretty much only going over each area once. So as you see me kind of progress downward, you're gonna see some areas that definitely have lighter amounts of ink, that it's not super thick, it's not smooth, but because of the texture I'm gonna be adding into the fur, that is completely okay. I do have to slow down a little bit because we've got all these fun little trimmings and details that are hanging on the llama. And so I do have to slow down as I come up in and around those items. You could kind of just plan on doing those darker and that way it wouldn't matter so much and you could kind of go over them. But So I'm smoothing out the snout with the E41. I'd also added that on the interior of his little ears adding a little more E43, smoothing again with E41, just kind of playing around with the shape. And then I'm adding just a touch of E93 onto the nose and also onto the interior of the ear. Again, I don't know that those are really pink, but I like that look. So E44 is the next on the fur. Now I am gonna use my squiggles. I have some people out there that always laugh at this, but I'm gonna do my kind of scribbly squiggles. And this first layer, the E44, literally goes over the entire llama. And the reason is for that is really at this point, I'm just adding that texture. I flicked on the ears from the bottom up. Um, those again have short fur, so it's gonna be more of a smooth blend. Coming up all in between those little areas, but I do the entire body. Now this isn't loops, it's scribbles or squiggles, kind of back and forth, going different directions truly just adding that texture and notice how tiny they are. E47 is the next and this one I'm kind of thinking about where is that animal going to appear a little bit darker. So his neck is this long cylinder shape so I know that it's going to get as it folds away or turns away from the viewer out to those sides it's going to get darker. So now I'm still working in squiggles, but those are going to come in from the edges of the llama kind of inward. And as it gets closer to that center line down his neck, they're going to get lighter. There might be just a few dots there. And the way you do that is just you spread out those squiggles. So it kind of spreads out as it gets to that center line. E41 is what I'm actually going to do to soften. So I'm not coming back in with a zero or a colorless blender. I'm coming back with my E41 and I'm dotting or squiggling. And I only go over the areas once. I let it sit and decide, did that blend enough? Do I need to do more? And for me, it blended enough. I like that kind of curly texture that that creates. So I'm leaving it just like that. The flowers I'm going to do in a pink. Um, they could have been poinsettias or something more holiday. But again, I'm making this kind of a New Year's image or a birthday one that I can share with a friend later. So I started with an R81 and then with an R85 I'm coming in and I'm adding these little petal shapes. So they're little C curves kind of from the inside out. So I'm not doing really any shading per se. I'm really just adding again a texture on top. It's really simple. 
And I get this idea, honestly, from Michelle um, Perquette, the person who designed the stamp. She does these gorgeous paintings now on Instagram. And she does these flowers that look just like this that she's painted. And she, it really is these layers of paint built up. So she doesn't use just two colors, but she does these nice petal shapes on these beautiful round flowers. So the next step is all this greenery. So I'm going to do kind of three different color combinations. The holly leaves are going to start with YG03. And because they're so small and I'm using really easy blending groups, I'm going to go ahead and do all of them at once. So all of the holly leaves get that YG03 and then they're I'm coming down the centers of each one with YG63. So that's down the center and kind of out from that line just a little bit on each of them. And then YG67 literally goes right down the line. This is one of those things when you have little pieces all over the place, you have to go back. <laughs> You'll miss one. And I did. So I added the YG63 on the upper right corner and now I've got the YG03 and I'm just softening around the edge. I don't need to do a bunch of blending. I just literally run that marker around the edge of each holly and it just softens that. The little rounded leaves or um, pieces I'm adding starting with a G20. So this is a much lighter color. Um, and this again, I'm trying to look for all the leaves that have that um, shape or feel to them so it's kind of the shorter stubby round leaves and then YG61 right at the center and it, I go a little bit extreme on the all of these little leaves because they're so small you do not need to do as much detail as I'm doing I just think it's fun to kind of add some of that dimension and then I do add a third color right at, the, it's basically almost a dot at that base center spot. And this is the YG63. So this set of leaves, those short rounded ones, they don't get near as dark as the holly. It's, you know, basically ending with the holly's mid-tone. So it stays much lighter. Making sure to hit all those little spots. And then those long needles, to me, they almost look like pine needles. I'm going to start with the YG63. These are super, super skinny. So take your time. I'm working way up on the tip of that um, brush nib. And then I use a tiny, tiny bit of G28. And I just come from the very base of the needle and flick about halfway out. Um, you could go back and soften that, but I, you probably aren't going to need to. It's such a small little area. Y21 is what I'm going to fill in um, kind of that rope and these fringe and pom-poms that kind of are wrapped around our beautiful llama. And as I'm doing this, I've realized I've completely missed a pink flower. So I will eventually come back and get that. Sorry about that. Hit and hit and good to go there. A little softening. Then I use a little bit of the Y28, and you can see, hopefully see what I'm doing. We have these funny little pom-poms with fringe at the bottom, so I'm adding some shape on those, and then I'm going in and just adding some little squiggles in the center of each of these little pom-poms with the Y28. Again, I'm not totally sure if those are supposed to be flowers or pom-poms, I'm just adding a little something. And I'm adding a diagonal kind of stripe along the rope making it look hopefully more like a twisted rope or twine that's kind of wrapped around the sky. So not a lot of shading just adding texture as much as anything on all these different pieces. And then I come back with a Y00. I felt like the rope and stuff got a little dark and so I wanted to brighten that up a little bit and I did that by adding that Y00 in. It just lightens it just a hair some funny little ties on those pieces. So I did that with my R85. And then I've got this background around the llama and I'm speeding this up way fast because you guys don't need to see me fill in a whole area. So I'm starting with a B00. Notice I didn't go all the way to the edge of that box. I'm coming back in with a B12 and flicking in from the edge onto that wet B00. Blend with the B00 and I've got this kind of nice sky with a little bit of a highlight around my llama. So this has a pretty easy kind of two to three section piece because I can go up to where those flowers kind of encroach in on the corners and it, so it makes an easy stopping spot and it makes it a little bit easier to um, 
blend those pieces together. So I did this in three sections, working down the third side. Again, starting with the B00, adding the B12, and then blending it back in with that B00. So I really do appreciate, as always, you guys stopping by, taking a look at one of the Copic videos. Make sure to add comments or questions down below. I do check in about weekly or more often when I get questions to try to answer those questions. I'm sorry if you're waiting for an answer. If you have requests for videos, please add those as well. If you haven't had a chance, check out our Facebook page where we have all sorts of Copic inspiration. And you can also check me out at my blog, www.scrapweaver.com. And that is where I have all of my live teaching opportunities to come see me in person and do a little bit of Copic coloring live. Thank you for joining me today and have a happy colorful week.